Yo, what's going on guys? My name is Javelric and today I'm bringing you the ultimate quick guide on the Garden of Karit and the related completions requirement that requires you to buy all the upgrades from the new reward shop related to this. We'll be going over the fastest way for you to get your points and get this requirement out of the way as quickly as possible. This will be aimed at higher level players but this could also relate to mid and low level players to just as an overview of what the content is. But then again, the gear setup and the inventory will all be higher high leveled and as i said folks on the completions requirement if you want to see more of these quick completions requirement guides let me know in the comment section down below i have a few planned but if you have any other suggestions let me know like the video if you do enjoy it subscribe if you're new and let's get into this video so first things first what do you need to do how does it work and it's quite simple actually you need to do herb runs and every single herb patch will give you a certain amount of points for the reward shop ran by Sidekicks. Yes, very interesting name, Sidekicks. Ha ha ha. Great pun, Jagex. The higher the herb, the more points you're getting. So, Torsals being the highest herbs will give you the most amount of points. However, if you talk to politics at the new area at the garden of karit you can right click him and ask him for the daily herb he will tell you what the daily herb is and i mean it's daily so you need to do this every single day ask him and plant that set herb it resets at 0000, 000, 000 game time of course and it's always highly recommended because you get five extra points for each seed that you plant which we'll get into in a little bit so that will definitely definitely add up over time Especially as a main, do it. As an Iron Man, just plant the highest one you can get. If not, if you don't have a lot of seeds. But that's just for me. So, next up, let's go over the shop. How do you buy it? And what is the best order to buy it in? So, first things first. I think, personally, upgrade the amount of seeds planted first. So, the way that works and what it does is you can plant multiple seeds by the way pro tip if you right click the seed patch you can configure the patch to always plant that amount of seeds which will make it easier because otherwise you'll always get a pop-up menu pro tip anyway the amount of seeds planted will also increase the amount of points you get per patch pretty much how it works is you get 50 points for each patch that you plant with your daily herb times the amount of seeds planted so if you can plant two seeds you get 100 points and if you can plant 10 seeds you get 500 points which obviously stacks up quite quickly after that i recommend you upgrading the growth cycle what this does is the current growth cycle of herbs if you have no upgrades is 80 minutes for it to grow and this will make it so it's an hour which is really nice because you can just do an hour of bossing do an herb run and repeat you could argue that after the third seed upgrade you could increase your growth cycle because you will still be getting a lot of herbs but i just upgraded the amount of seeds planted first and then the growth cycle and that worked perfectly fine for me however I have some pro tips for you to make it even quicker to get your reputation or points or whatever you want to call it. First things first, growth potions. I think that's the first thing that everyone thought of when this came out. Just go to the player on farm, buy growth potions from your beans. And if you have a lot of beans, that is definitely the way to do it. And I would highly recommend you doing it before you even start. Buy as many growth potions from the shop at the player on farm as you can to be able to just get a head start. I did it and I think i got up to nearly upgrade three of the amount of herbs that i could plant and it was really quick definitely worth doing and some people might even have enough to do this entire piece of content with just growth potions 100 worth it if you can obviously if you want to rush it but if you don't have that amount of beans it is actually worth growing black dragons whilst you're doing this look you're always going to the ardon patch anyway to do your herb run right so it is very easy for you to look at your black dragons and see if they are adolescent if they're adolescent take them out and sell them to the black dragon salesman you can easily grow 10 black dragons every 10 or two days sorry to be able to get around 25,000 beans at the player on farm these 25,000 beans equal to 25 growth potions which equals to 12 and a half thousand points extra every two days that speeds this grind up so so much and is 100 worth doing if you want to get this done as quickly as possible let's get into a gear setup though 
for you to be able to do these runs as efficiently as possible. In the background, you'll be seeing me doing the run whilst I'll be talking about the inventory and the gear so they will not be side to side so you can actually see what's going on. But the inventory is quite simple. You want to have an active file to be able to teleport to the Mortania patch because that is just slightly quicker than the Lodestone. Next up, I recommend you being on the Lunar Spellbook and having Astral, Water and Law runes in your inventory for, well, you could use the Caterpie teleport, but I believe that Lodestone is actually quicker if you search over the actual mountain thingy, which it's easy to do, trust me. But it's mainly for the Trollheim teleport. If you've already done Livid Farm, you should have the Trollheim teleport unlocked and you can easily just teleport right next to it, which is beautiful and speeds this up a lot. If you do not have it unlocked, you don't have to be on Lunars and it's recommended to just be in a normal spell book, have your Trollheim teleport on there, whether it's a tap or whether it's just the runes. Next up is the Mystical Sand Seed. You can buy this off the Grand Exchange for about 400k. This will teleport you right next to the new Garden of Crits patch, which quick teleport and it's very cheap. And if you're an Iron Man, you can get it by thieving the knights that are surrounded by the Garden of Karit, like they're literally there. Next up, the Crystal Teleport Seed to be able to teleport quickly to the patch in Priftonus. The Magic Cape is optional. I like to have it in my inventory because especially if you're doing PVM and you're on Ancients, for example, you want to be able to quickly switch to your Lunars and switch back to uh, your Ancients or normal spellbook, whatever you'd be using. And lastly, of course, you want your seeds because you need to plant some of these, right? When it comes to gear, you want to have your Master Farmer's Outfit. This can teleport you to the RD farm, but also has some boosts as well to yield and all the other things. Just hover over it and see what boost it is. It isn't really important. I'm not really going to be talking about boosts, but just to mention them, you can use a Juju Farming Potion to increase your yield and the Green Fingers Aura, but because I wanted to do this as quickly as possible, I don't want to stand at one herb pad for like an hour to harvest a lot of herbs. But if you also want to make a lot of money, you can definitely do that because it's definitely worth it and you get a lot of herbs. Even without it, you get a lot of herbs. Next up is using the Master slash Farming Cape. If you don't have 120 farming yet, it's fine. The 99 Farming Cape is still worth using because there's a chance of you harvesting the patch in one go, which speeds us up dramatically. If you have the 120 cape though, you can definitely use that as well because they give free super compose when you wear it. So that's 100% worth it. Also, pro tip when it comes to super composed, go bring your noted super compose to one of the two leprechauns, use it on them, and he will just super compose your patch for you and you don't have to think about it, which is really, really nice. Next up is the explorer's ring in your ring slot for the lumby patch that you also need to do. Well, it's actually, it, would you call it Lumpy? It's actually South Falador, isn't it? Definitely worth having that. Makes it very easy. You just have to search north and you're there. And lastly, have the Wilderness Sword. And I would recommend having a main hand with mobile as well. So you can blade a dive if you have it. To go to the Wildy Patch. And that's it. That's all the gear you need. That's all the inventory you need. And that's all the information you need. Hope you guys found this useful. If you did, leave a like on this video. Subscribe if you're new. And my name's Jeff Elric, And I'll see you guys in my next video.